Hi folks, welcome to the Cannabis Corner. I'm your host, Kerry Burns. You know, back in the 1940s when the government started the Hemp for Victory campaign because we couldn't get hemp from the Philippines because of Japanese takeover, the government decided to pump $300 million and build these hemp factories and grow about 50,000 acres of hemp to produce the seed that they would then subsequently grow the half a million acres in one year to produce the hemp that we so valuable needed for the war effort during World War II. Now this $300 million was a probably one of the best investments at the time that the government had ever made. And because, guess what? The hemp production was a success. And this is what private enterprise can do here in America today. We don't need the government's money to do this. There's plenty of people out there in business that would like to start up in a, a business in a new industry, one that actually had some promise of selling the products that they produced. And if we took, and the fact that in one acre of land that we could grow hemp on, first of all, we're gonna look at the products of what that'll yield. The utmost in this, from squeezing the oil from the seed and also from the uh, resinous parts of the plant, we could produce up to 30 barrels of oil per acre. Now, just say we grew 100 million acres of hemp. We actually need to grow about 300 million acres of hemp in this country to totally replace all the oil we bring from foreign countries. But when you look at the fact that a lot of the oil is used to make products that the herds from the hemp plant could replace, actually the figures of around 200 million acres would be actually uh, be enough and we could uh, produce enough oil that we wouldn't have to ship any oil in from foreign countries. But let's just look at 100 million acres just to keep the math simple for most of you. <clears throat> if we grew 100 million acres of hemp, not only would we produce the 30 barrels per acre, so we're looking at about, uh, what, 100 million times 30, so that's about 3 billion barrels of oil. That's about half of what we use in this country in a year right now. And uh, when you look at the fact that about 20% of the oil is used for making products and stuff, well, we're going to, in 100 million acres of hemp growing, we're going to have 4,500 pounds or two and a half tons of hemp herds per acre. Now, in 100 million acres, you're looking at 250 million tons of hemp herds. And this will totally replace the 25% of the oil that's used to make products. Products like dynamite, plastics, uh, everything in, that we use day to day, all of those could be made from the hemp herds. Very simple extraction, uh, a product that we can generate for the most part in two crops a year in, in most of the hemp producing regions in this country. Okay, so now we have, we have 30 barrels of oil, which at current prices, that's, that's around $3,000. But let's just say we only got $20 a barrel for it, okay? That's $600 right there, just for that one product off that acre of land. The only thing a, co a farmer can grow today that even comes close to that is cotton, and it's with uh, using four times, up to 10 times the amount of land and four times the amount of resources to produce the same amount of product. So really, you know, Cotton growing versus hemp is really not a very good idea. Ne neither is it economically friendly. Uh, then we look at the uh, 1,500 to 2,000 pounds or one ton of fiber that's also produced. So see from the stalks, the outside layers of the stalks, we get a ton of the fiber, 1,500 pounds to 2,000 per acre. Okay, one ton per acre and 100 million acres, we would be looking at 100 million tons of fiber. Folks, this is enough fiber to make rope and clothing and everything to stretch around the globe many, many, many times. And this is a commodity in our industry that is bought every day, clothing, types of textile materials and stuff. That's what this fiber would produce. And the beauty of the hemp fiber is that it's about a hundred times stronger than any other fiber that's produced out there. And, and not only is it a hundred times stronger, but it's up to 75% cheaper to produce. Uses way less water. It's one of the friendliest growing textiles on the planet. Uses the least water of any of them. And when you look at the fact that the, in one acre of land, we get the 30 barrels of oil, we get the two and a half tons of herds, which produce utmost number of products, and we get the ton of fiber. And then you take the seed, okay? We get up to about five tons of seed produced per acre. Now, this seed can be mashed into feed, not only for humans, but uh, also for cattle and different types of livestock that we 
waste a lot of the corn and types of food that's grown that could be grown for food crops in this country. We waste just so we can feed these animals. We wouldn't have to do that. It's already growing on the acre of hemp. We don't have to grow another acre to get that. It's already in that acre of hemp that we're growing. So hopefully the picture's starting to open up for you here, folks, that this one acre is going to yield for the farmer easily. I mean, even at rock bottom prices, if you looked at fiber prices from the 40s and herd prices even from the, even earlier than that, the early 20s and 30s and stuff, the farmer is still going to be able to make between $1,500 and $2,500 per acre. Now this is based on yields of numbers and stuff that we generated back during the Hemp for Victory campaign and also during the time when hemp was legal to grow in this country. There were actually uh, pretty detailed records kept in the hemp growing regions of the amounts that were being produced and the, and the fibers, the weights, everything. I mean, it was, they, they kept really actually pretty good records. And for not having computers and all, and you think that all this had to be logged by hand and all, it's amazing really that they got the numbers they did. But they actually got really good working numbers back then. But the difference is today, here we are 75 years later since the hemp industry was outlawed by the Marijuana Tax Act in 1937. But today, our technology has, you know, jumped light years compared to what it was then. I mean, we have computers today. We have farm equipment that, you know, that they didn't even know even existed back then. We have decorticator machines today that are high tech. They're not these simple, you know, just pound, grind, grind, grub, and run, run the stuff through and, you know, break down every day and all. We have high tech equipment today. And with this high te tech equipment, high tech farming techniques and stuff, our yields per acre are going to exceed these ones that we were just talking about here in this video. All of those yields and stuff were numbers based on from the hemp for victory period during the 40s and, and periods earlier than that, even back into the 1800s. In the 1850s in this country, we had over 2,000 farms in this country that were generating over 10,000 acres of hemp each. I mean, my God, there's millions and millions and millions of pounds of hemp being produced in the 1850s. It was that important of a crop. And we in this country, just to the you know, the heads of a few selfish people, and Harry Anslinger being one of them, I mean, he couldn't get a normal job. He'd been over the alcohol uh, prohibition board, and once they made alcohol legal again, he didn't have a job. So he's looking for something else he could, you know, make illegal so he could become the, the uh, prohibition king of it, and guess what he found? Marijuana. And they used racial tech techniques, bad commercials, everything. I mean, they went from top to bottom to to sway the American people that this substance should be made illegal. But the American people were so far-sighted to realize that the hemp industry was going to be thwarted by this. Most of them didn't even know what they were even talking about when they were talking about marijuana. Nobody even related that to hemp or cannabis or anything like that. So there was a lot of confusion in the public at that time. But today in America, where we're suffering from jobs, we have all of these industries that pollute uh, the hemp industry is one that's very, it's a very green industry. We're not going to need any pesticides, no herbicides to grow that. It drops enough leaf litter to cover all the ground. It's planted so dense, 40 seeds per square foot, folks. 40 plants per square foot. That's what allows the strength of this fiber to develop is that plant close planting because the plants grow straight up and the fibers themselves are very elongated. That gives them their strength and their elasticity. And... Uh, we, we just, we, we have to bring this industry full circle again. This is one that not only would bring about jobs immediately, I mean, this is something that we could start immediately. And we wouldn't need government intervention. It could go into free enterprise, be taken up by private businesses. It would be a way for the farmer, particularly the small farmers in America that have been just suffering. I mean, they're, they're hurting. They, they don't, all these big agricultural concerns and stuff, and of course they're going to try to grow hemp and all that, but, but the beauty of hemp and all, it doesn't matter. If, if you grow 100 acres versus somebody growing 1,000, you're still going to be able to be competitive because, of, because we can fix the price on the product as, it's, as it comes in. There'll be enough money to be made, and if you have 100 acres of land that you were growing food crop or something else on then you were making minimal amount on, this would definitely give you a boost in your income, and it would not thwart the food 
production in this country. This would help the food production in this country because the difference will be that we take the hemp seed and the mashed hemp seed, and this is what we'll be feeding to our livestock and to people. These are high in omega-3s, they're very rich in vitamins, very, very rich in protein. These would be a more than suitable substitute for anything we're feeding cattle and livestock right now in these feedlots. In fact, it would be better for them. It would more simulate what they get by eating grass out in the field. Corn is really not a good thing to be feeding cattle, and they only do it to beef up the, the beef and all that right before it goes into market to be sold. If we were, if we were producing cattle that were raised on hemp, mashed hemp seed and then allowed them to, to uh, eat coastal hay and stuff that's grown, we would not only be producing better cattle, but we could produce it a lot cheaper. And if we could produce the meat cheaper, the farmer will make more money, and also the consumer won't have to pay as much. And when we look at the fact that 30 barrels of oil could be replaced for every acre of hemp we grow, we could totally do away with the foreign oil and keep the trillion dollars a year that we just spend on gasoline to run our cars in this country. We could keep that money in this country and let that trillion dollars work in our, to our favor not have it go out there that we're having to borrow and pay interest on it. So it's, it, it's debting us the whole way and, and there's nothing positive about it. This way here is positive, it's win-win. How, how could we say no to that? And, and not to mention the drug war. We, we're not even gonna get into that. That's just a whole nother separate set of reasons why we shouldn't even, even have any of this going on. But let's look at the economy of this, folks. An acre of hemp produces a lot, produces a lot for the farmer, produces a lot of products, and it produces them cleanly, and it replaces these products that we are spending a fortune for in this country, things that are taking money out of our economy that could be enriching our economy. We, we, there's no excuse for having to fire teachers and stuff because of budget shortfalls from taxation and stuff. This is ridiculous. We don't have to go through that. There's plenty of money to be made. We just have to get over this thing about people getting high on marijuana. We don't care if they get sloppy, passed out, drunk on alcohol. That's okay. Sell it at Brookshire's. It's okay. But we're so worried about people getting high on marijuana, and they're, they, they don't do violent crime. They don't go out and do stupid things. They don't go out and mess up. It's ridiculous that we have this another lie that's keeping an industry that could really turn this country around. So please, folks, if you, if you really wanted to do some good today, start educating the people around you who are ignorant. And that's all it is, it's just, it's an ignorance to the facts. And show them these videos, let them read, let them understand. This, this material is well documented and it's not something that's been done in modern time just so people can get cannabis legal and then we can get high. That has nothing to do with it. The, the, the cannabis portion of this is, is pales in comparison to what the hemp industry is going to do. The money generated from taxation on cannabis and regulating all that like they're talking about, that's just so stupid. I mean, the same people who came up with the Marijuana Tax Act must have taken their brains and put them in the people who are talking that nonsense. Turn it over to free enterprise. Make it legal across the board. If people want to smoke cannabis, it's their God-given right. It's way safer than anything else they could put in their body in any, any substance. And it has certainly super, just a tremendous amount of benefit and would enrich their lives, let alone our economy. And we thank you for spending time in the cannabis corner.